foremost, I'd like to thank you guys for waking up early on the fourth day of camp and come strangle each other. Right? Like it's a, this is a weird thing. Like, like we are going to learn today or add on today to how, how we stop blood from going to our brain. So kudos to you guys for doing that. And thank you for coming to my class. This is my first opportunity to teach at the BJJ Wolf Trotters camp. And uh, it means a lot to me that you guys are here and hopefully we see all your smiling faces a lot more. So, Megan, can I use you? So, the way that I instruct and the way that I view things, I always want to know why. So a lot like Heather, if you guys took Heather's class yesterday, it's kind of the same thing. I want to know what's going on. And then when I, once I know what's going on, I can add my own creativity, my own thoughts, right? So let's start at the very basics of what's actually going on. Because a lot of times, from what I've seen, kind of doing this seminar, we learn guillotine in what I consider to be the wrong way. How many of us learn guillotine? Full guard, close guard, come around, we grab, and we go like this, and we finish. Yeah, at least one, so I thank you for the participation, right? So that, that's a, a common thing, and, and you know, you can get people to tap like that for sure. You put enough pressure, that sucks. I'm going to tap from that, you get me in that tight. I don't want, I just don't want to be there. You might not put me out, but I, I don't want to be there. It hurts your neck. Hopefully, I'm instructing this in a way that afterwards, your necks are fine. You shouldn't get that, you know, that feeling, the that esophagus, it's like, we don't want that. So, over here, and just if you can, sit just like ah, uh, basically. Okay, so this is what's happening in any string, okay? You have arteries that run hot, okay? So why doesn't everybody, why don't we start by feeling our own necks, okay? So if we start kind of on the side of our neck, we'll see how that's hard, right? And then we go forward a little bit, forward a little bit, oh, what's this soft spot, okay? Well, that's an artery running up, supplying our brain with what it needs, okay? So that's what we're always in every strangle trying to cut off. Doesn't matter what it is. If we look at a rear naked choke as an example, I'd make a nice V, right? A lot of heat chokes, we talk about the V, if the triangle is an obvious one. But I got artery cut off on one side, forearm on the other, right? Then we want to compress forward, boom, she goes out. The second way of doing that is you put something under the jaw, just like this, break posture down into it, okay? So why don't we quickly, we're not gonna grab a partner, we're gonna stay like this, but just find somebody real quick, one person sits like this, the other person goes like this, and then gently pushes down on the back of the head. So grab somebody real quick, I'm gonna continue to talk while we're doing this. <laughs> and see, with all that moving, let's see, let's see if we can get 10. Oh, oh yeah, I see. Let's see if we can get people to tap like that. It shouldn't hurt. Don't do like a whole lot of pressure. <laughs> hey, right across, hey, when you choke me, more than welcome to. Just, yep, just straight across and just push down. Is it true? <laughs> All right, is what I'm saying true? Can does it feel like? Oh shit! Right? All right. Every seminar I ever go to, every time that somebody's teaching me, whether it be white belt or world-class black belt, I always try to get at least one thing. And if you get at least one thing from this class, on every strangle, compression, not extension. I don't ever want to see you guys ripping people's necks up. We get excited, right? We, we get in there, we're like, yeah, rah! <laughs> and then our training partner, like, ah! Damn it, no, I can't, I got robo neck for a week, and you know, and we didn't put them off. We just hurt them, and now they're pissed off, and they pee in our cereal. I don't know where that just came from. <laughs> so, compression, not extension. The whole thing, that's it. If you don't take anything else from this, compression, not extension. Okay, okay so, we all believe that that's true, right? Like, we can put something in there, and we can compress down, all right? Let's go into our basic guillotine. Basic guillotine setup, we'll get a partner and we'll see if that works. Okay, so I'm gonna set it up. She's just gonna be like this. She's gonna be a good partner. Obviously, it's not very often that somebody's just like this, right? <laughs> Although in scrambles, it does happen. People forget about their necks in heavy scrambles, right? 
But in this case, she's just going to be like this so we can see everything that's going on. Okay? So first and foremost, I'm going to get like that. Boom. I prefer my strangle hand to be a wet noodle. I'm a skinnier guy, I'm a, a, a littler guy. If I come in with force, with my, this giant bicep coming in, it just, I, I can't get that seal on the neck that I really want. Okay? So when I come around, I'm trying to be nice and chill. That wet noodle. Okay? Do I look weird? <laughs> like a poor man's Conor McGregor or some shit? <laughs> So, let's see, what's going to be the best way? Why don't we rotate? Right here. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I'm going to come through, and I'm going to make sure that my armpit is on the back of the head. I look at the guillotine as a position, okay? The position being, I'm going to put weight on the back of the head, and if nothing else, I'm making life hard for my opponent to move. Again, I'm a 160-pound dude. I don't have any interest in, in seeing who's... If me and him roll and, and I don't break down his posture somehow, he's just going to throw me off, right? Like, he's going to get at me. So I need, to, I need to do something. Even 160 pounds on the back of somebody's head, even your head, that's, that's a real thing, right? So I want to get my armpit on the back of the head with weight, okay? If nothing else, I can be here. I can play here, okay? But this is a decent thing. Armpit on the back of the head. My strangle hand is coming through. Thank you, thank you. Now, they might move their jaw. As a general, so while I'm teaching this, as a general rule, you can aim for the collarbone, okay, or being parallel with the collarbone. But what I prefer to say is perpendicular with the chin. Okay. So I'm coming through. Oh, grab it. Okay, notice my second hand, this, this little helper hand hasn't done anything yet. Okay. And I'm not in full guard. I need movement. When you're in a gun, when, you're, when my legs are around my opponent, especially if they're a big opponent, my hips are like this, I can't move. I don't like that feeling. I don't like getting smashed, I don't like that feeling. Okay? So if I'm setting up guillotines, it's all, my legs are free, my hips are free, well, that's where I want to be. Okay? Come through, I'll pin on the back of the head. This hand is trying to catch on my chest as high as possible. I want everybody to do this now with me, okay? We bring our hand around and put it on your belly button first. All right, this seems like a reasonable gap for a neck to survive, doesn't it? I mean, it seems like I, my neck can survive, everybody's neck can survive in this. Now let's just raise our hand with nothing else. Let's bring it up right at our chest. Well, that's, I don't know if that's a reasonable place for our neck to survive, right? So if we can catch here, First, why not do that? There's two ways to do this. First, you could come here and you could go like this. <laughs> that sucks. It's gonna suck on your opponent's neck and it's not as strong as it would be if I sank my body low. Does that make sense to everybody? So what I'm gonna do, on her small neck here, it's easy for me to come around and trap. But on bigger people, I might need to get a little bit lower so I can trap as high as I can. Okay? This is important. The next thing that we're going to do is the second that I get that trap on my chest, my elbow is going to come back home. As a general rule in jiu-jitsu, if your elbows are flared, it's not good for you. Maybe we need to flare them in a second to catch something, right? Maybe we need to do this. But immediately we need to know, oh shit, I need to bring my elbows back home. Okay, anything. Think about an arm drag, think about anything. Okay. Coming, um, armpit on the back of the head, coming through, arm perpendicular, hand on as high on the chest as I can, and then actively pulling my elbow back. Okay. What do I do with my leg? There's two defenses that she's going to have if we get to this point. One is going to be to hop to the other side, which I think we probably, a lot of us know, right? And the other is going to be to roll. Okay. So we're going to try to answer both of those. So I'm coming through, getting into my position. I'm going to lighten it up just so my uki, right? I'm not going to, I'm going to keep my hand low, so don't judge me on this. <laughs> but as I'm, very I'm, judged. I'm not falling to my back, I'm putting pressure on the head. 
This is the huge, this is the biggest difference. Okay? I'm not going like this. I'm not falling into it or backwards. I'm here. I'm compressing on the head. Just now I'll bring in my little help. Okay? This secondary hand's only purpose is to hold that hand in place. That's it. Okay. Once I catch, bring look at this space. Okay, that's a pretty small space. That's a real small space. Right? The secondary hand, so she could be like, well, I would make that space bigger. Right? Secondary hand says, no. Bring this in. This elbow, what is it doing? It's flared. What do I do? Bring it home. Right? That's it. Where is her neck going to survive? It's not. All right. So, armpit or weight on the back of the head, perpendicular to chin, man high. Secure. Weight on her. My bottom knee, and look, I'm on my hip. My bottom knee is going to shear into her hip. And this top one, you can hang out and have a cigarette if you want. Get ready for a jump if possible or if you so choose to wrap the body, okay? So here, real nice and tight. This one's kind of just waiting. Some people are super athletic and make a really big jump. Oh, cool, good luck, all right? And I'm here, okay? My elbow continues to come back home. If I'm still, 100% you're gonna get taps right here, right? But if not, I figure out a way to compress. I do not pull her neck up. We do not want to injure our opponent, and I don't want that coughing sensation. I don't want anything. So I figured out how to compress my body, right? The one thing, compression, not extension. So even, you're going to get taps here, okay? But if not, figure out how to put weight on the back of the head, just like the first thing that we did, okay? We think we got it good enough to give it a shot, see if it's true. All right, let's see if it's true. One, two, three. <laughs> so I know ultimately that this hand is the one that's going to hold it in place, right? That's, that's its main job. So what if I come here and she immediately blocks with her shoulder, pushes into me, oh, like something like this. Right? We've all been there. This is good defense. This makes sense. Oh my God. Well, it's going to be impossible for me to get my hand through her shoulder right? and, and get this grip. So what do we do then? Who knows? Arm and guillotine. Absolutely. How many of us have had trouble with arm and guillotines? I, I have never done a seminar where people are like, oh, that's the way you do. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of problem with that. This doesn't happen. Our men perplex us. The cool thing is, hopefully after this, you have this simple solution. It's the same fucking thing. Compression, not extension. Where the only difference in the arm and guillotine is where does the little helper go? Instead of the little helper coming here, the little helper comes here. That's it. <laughs> that's that's where we're at. We're okay. here. Done. Yeah. Let's. <laughs> All right. So the only bad thing about this is what does it do to my health? It flares it. Okay, but this is one of the rare exceptions where I don't mind a flared elbow because she can't, she can't attack me. Okay, so guess how we're going to finish this? What's the one, number one thing? Compression. That's it. So we're going to compress. Everything is the same, okay, but this time, I, this time I got that down here. So I'm going to hold it there, and now there's just a little bit more effort needed to compress. So if there's not a body, stay right there. There's not a body in there. If I trap down here, and I need to make a more of an effort to compress. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> it's compressing. Yeah, something's getting compressed in there. <laughs> that's a real beauty. <laughs>
Okay, so let's see if this is true. Everything else is the same. Boom, boom, boom. And I just, perfect. And just here, this hand, you see the difference? Instead of this, instead of coming back home, I'm getting it to an angle that I can press into my body. Okay? And then everything else, everything else is the same. Elbows coming home, compression on the back of the head, absolutely everything. All right, let's see. Boom, gets that shoulder. Oh no! All the same side, everything's the same. Let's see. Ha, 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 ha. Oh no, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has to. Look. Everything's the same. See how my elbow's flaring and being nice? Bring my elbow back home. Yeah. Right? Everybody see that? Same thing. Just a different helper. Let's see if it's true. One, two, three. You know, we had a little trouble with it. That's okay, right? We need to understand what we're doing in drills. All of the principles that I showed you apply in the same fashion as arm and guillotine. We still want to compress. You know, if we're feeling it in our trait, almost certainly that means that our arms are getting a little excited, a little overzealous. Okay? And that's okay. We've got to learn not to do that. If we're falling back on our back flat, a lot of us have been taught to go into guard. You'll notice that I spend almost no time on where my leg placement is. Because I think about it so much as I want my weight on the back of the head. If I didn't have legs, I wouldn't care. I mean, I guess I would care. I like that. <laughs> but do you understand what I'm saying? That's not my focus. My focus isn't to trap them. Look, if I'm in a, uh, if we're, if we're an original guard, right? I know that I want to get pressure on the back of the head. If somebody puts me in full guard, what do I do? That is a little hard. <laughs> my point being, if I put my forearm on the head, where am I breaking their posture into? And his only option is to rip up. Fuck, that hurts. Am I allowed to swear? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's every literally cussing every class. I'm just a little late now. Yeah, my, my fault, anybody that doesn't like swearing, um, I. Uh, well, fuck off. Like yeah. All right. So, don't get frustrated if, oh man, I couldn't get this one, or this one isn't as clean, or, or whatever the case may be. That's okay. That's why we're here, right? Does that make sense? All right. So because of time, 9:44, uh, we're gonna go on to yeah. we're gonna go on to what I consider. This is my favorite. Okay. And Marcelo Garcia made it famous. A high elbow, or what I like to call it, Marcelo to give him the credit, right? So this is my favorite finish. Guess what's happening in this? Oh, we're fucking compression and extension, right? Did you say crushing? No, I said compression. Oh, you said compression. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's my bad, bad listener. <laughs> All right. So, same thing, but what he's doing, this is a neat little trick. Or at least this is how I view what he's doing. Okay? That elbow, let's, let's see. Let's see if you guys can understand what I'm saying. So, she's got a couple defenses, and one of them is to get that shoulder in, right? Well, that shoulder, what's helping? That shoulder becomes a little helper for her neck. It's a lot harder to get a lever to compress the neck. Because right? that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get to a point where this neck becomes a lever and you compress down. Does everybody understand that? Everybody gets that concept, right? Yes. When I get that high elbow up, the shoulder goes back. What does that do? It elongates the neck. And if it's a longer neck, if it's a longer lever, do we have more leverage. That's what's happening. So he's coming through. Boom. Everything can be the same. This shoulder. Boom. Now we have a frame against that person's shoulder, which elongates the neck, which makes compression easier. Does everybody understand that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm going through this quickly again because of time frame, because I'd like to get to the fourth one as well. And I mean, there's some higher level guys in here, and I can go through gooseneck stuff, or uh, um, chin strap, however you want to call it, right? But this is, this is my absolute favorite. This is how I try to finish everyone, if possible. Same principle. I do exactly the same thing. Okay, I want, I'm very conscious of where this is. Weight on the back of the head. So now this time, I'm just making sure I kind of just control this arm just a little bit. 
and I just rotate my body. Just subtle, everybody see it? There's no space, yeah, you probably can't see right now, right? I'll try to explain. There's no space between her body and mine currently, okay? I don't want to give up pressure on the head. All I'm gonna do is rotate my body just a little bit so my helper can come in and grab. This time, instead of the first time we had bring it back home, the second time we had it flared, pushing against our chest, this time the helper is becoming uh, a tool to elongate the neck so I have a longer lever to compress. Oh, make that little adjustment, and then everything's the same. Look at my body. I'm never going flat, never going into full guard. My body's the same. This comes up, and then I compress. Super duper simple. Super duper awful. <laughs> right? This, by the way, even on, on high level dudes, this only gives one area for escape. Okay, and again, we can go over that. And we can, I can obviously do privates and we can, afterwards, I'm available to answer any questions. It's just time frame, right? Boom, I elbow. Compress, figure out the way to get weight on the back of the lever, at the end of the lever, as much as we can. Okay? Let's see if that works. Same, oh, I'm sorry, grip. It's really simple. Oh, oh. Doesn't this look familiar? It's, everything, it's, it's really, really simple stuff. It's just the little adjustments with your body and how we're compression, compressing, not extending. Okay? Same thing, same thing, same thing. Little helper is the only difference. The little helper is just elongating the lever so it's easier to break the pressure or break the posture. Okay? So let's see if that's true. One, two, three. <laughs> Second, another one of my favorites that doesn't get used a lot, I got a little bit bigger of a body here, uh, so I can demonstrate. I'm gonna show, and then we can go over it at some other point. If you have questions, just grab me, whatever the case may be. I just don't have time for everybody to come back together, okay? And then third, you gotta get a really goofy picture. I'm probably gonna put you up front, because that rash guard is just... <laughs> <laughs> the, the weirder the rash guards, the better. Okay. Okay, so this is one of my favorites. So, especially off a of scramble, and, and I, this finishes like a guillotine, and, and some may call it something different, but I, I consider this a guillotine. So, especially on bigger bodies, I'll just play here, right? Just, this is not, I mean, does this seem fun to you? <laughs> right? Like, that weight on the back of the head stops movement. It doesn't stop movement, it makes it less explosive. Okay? So, I'll be playing here, and depending what he does, let's say with this arm, if he comes through, I'll just help it through and get my guillotine grip, okay? Immediately, immediately, I bring that elbow back home, right? You can kind of guess these little things that I hope you take away, right? Compression, not extension, elbows back home, almost always. Right? This stuff will help you in jiu-jitsu in general. Okay? So, boom, catch. Immediately get this grip. Now check this out. Okay, this takes a little bit. A little bit of athleticism in the way that I do it. I'm sure there's slicker ways to do it. But I know that I want to compress the neck. Right? I know that. So once I'm here, I'm going to do that, keeping the weight. I'm going to do it real nice. I'm going to slide through. Okay? So I'm going to do it on him just because, like I said, he's a bigger guy or whatever. But here, slide through. Okay? As I slide through, I have a super compression on that neck. Okay. Then, so now I have, a, I have an arm trap with the neck. That's more stuff, right? So it's going to be damn near impossible. There's no way all that stuff is fitting in here. It's too big of a guy. Okay. But it does mean all that stuff will fit in here. So all the same, all the same finishing techniques. I just trapped down here. So if we see this slide, that wet noodle, we need contact with this other side. That's why this, on this one, it's real important to come in with that wet noodle. Make sure that we have contact with that arm. Bringing this through, boom. I come through, and then take this leg and shoot it in, okay? Why do I shoot it in? That arm comes like this. Boom, 
and he might not even, let's, let's say he's like, yeah, oh, just like this, I could come like this, step over, so everything else, watch, compression of his head, elbow back home, figure out a way to compress. No arms, none of this, no, rah, I'm not a strong dude. Okay, all the same principles. You can do really fun stuff like that. Okay, I'll take it. So we'll, again, play with that. As I'll be here, you know, the rest of today. Be drunk later on, so we'll do the cool stuff. <laughs> um, and then tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, whenever, ask me all the questions in the world, and we'll go through it. But that one is super duper fun. I really like that. But that and Marcelo Tino have probably two favorite. So I'll, I'll have time. A question or two. Is there any like anything that you guys want to ask now, or save it for when I'm drunk? <laughs> All right. I'll get a question. Are yes, you doing uh, the people that uh, other than just doing the Marcelo team? How do you handle the people that do the swim move when you have your classic uh, low elbow guillotine that you were doing in the beginning? Yeah, if they do the swim so yeah. Just like any answer to anything, is it depends, right? Because it depends on how much their weight shifts. So the nice thing about this idea of having compression is it limits their movement. So if they're kind of coming up like this with their head down, what does that look like I want to do? It looks like I want to roll almost, right? So it might be that you take them with these legs that you have, right? Because I keep my hips, right? Well, if I'm on the back of the head and they want to jump over, they, well, maybe I just help them. Right? We don't have to get a submission. I think about it as a position. Right? I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't get excited about it. I just want to control that position. And for me, if I'm rolling a big dude, this allows me to use my weight to control that position. One more. Anybody have one more question? Cool. Well, I really appreciate you guys, and um, thank you for coming to this. Uh,